Let us all sing together hymn number 21. Hymn number 21. Immortal, invisible. Let's do the, the prayer request, and then we'll do the second song, the 73, and uh, then we can all introduce our prayer with our normal song. Let's do that. Let's do it that way. So, uh, yeah, go ahead. Yes. You know, Carolyn's uh, brother had been very, very ill. Uh, and that's fairly recent, too. Uh, Tom, we need to remember him in prayer. Yes. Go ahead, Greg. I have to thank you that when he was sick, he made the move. Amen. Yes. Yeah, that's a lot of work. Wonderful. And that's Madam's thirty sixth uh, grand and great grandchild. <laughs> Amen. So Bonnie's got a new niece, uh, Holly. A great niece, I guess would be. It could be a great niece. <laughs> uh, she's had a baby girl. Thank the Lord. Go ahead. Um, we had members here about seven years ago and they seem to be doing well. Yes. Amen. So we must remember Macy's family. She used to be one of our members here. And uh, she has t uh, rested in peace. And her family, we need to remember. It's just beautiful details of how God intervened so her family could be with her uh, during those last moments. Anybody else? <coughs> Go ahead.
Yeah. So we need to remember Mr. Elgrick, uh, he's, he's got uh, some issues to resolve. Uh, I'd like to remember to the head family. Uh, Mr. James uh, was one of those fellows that he always remember. He's always helping people in this town. He died uh, yesterday. Uh, he's got a handicapped son, uh, and his wife had just passed uh, about six months ago. Uh, it was just a beautiful family. He, he, they had married when they were 16 years old. He's 89, so they were married 73 years. And, and uh, her s his son uh, is having a hard time. They do have a son, too, in Toledo that that uh, hopefully he'll help help with his brother. Uh, go ahead. I just want to give my brothers in prayer. They're all three pastors. And I just want to make sure prayers go up for them in advance to their special protection. Amen. Uh, we need to remember our police officers, especially her brothers. It is... You know, it's 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 hard times for law enforcement uh, with all the all all this unrest uh, puts extra pressure on them. And their first line responders, you know, we a lot of times we don't appreciate the work they do to keep us safe. And yeah. the National Guard. Yes, I know National Guard has been activated uh, several places. I know in. <coughs> My uh, new son-in-law was going to get activated, but he's over in Virginia getting officer training, So, but his unit was over in Louisville uh, with uh, all the unrest over there. Uh, a, a lot of issues there, Carrie. And Elsie? Yes. Yeah, so we need to remember two families, Elsie and her family. Elsie needs some help. And uh, then the Stoner family has lost uh, mom. Yeah. Just a request, but also pray for Elsie because I thought she had a stroke. And in talking to her last evening, nothing showed on her MRI. Or that's wonderful. Anyway, if any damage, damage that's so great. About maybe some vascular issues, but mm -hmm. That's great. That's a good, great news. Great news. Elsie's been struggling with health uh, for some years, uh, but it's really come to a head lately. Uh, we need to remember uh, Elsie in prayer. I, I'm sure she wishes to be with us today. Uh, but she's having some, some issues she's working through. Uh, anybody else? I don't want to miss anybody. We got several in our bulletin that we need to remember. So let us all sing together our second song. And that's a beautiful song, Holy, Holy, Holy.
P Peter, First Peter five seven. We come as a church together to praise you and worship you. Before uh, this prayer, you heard us bring prayer requests that did not make our bulletin. And we want to bring not only those prayer requests, but the ones also written in our bulletin. There's need of health. There's need of spiritual blessings. There's need of social issues, economic issues. Deep within our hearts, too, we have silent requests that we did not bring before you at this time, but you know each one of these. As a church, we want to ask your mercy and forgiveness. As a church, too, we want to ask uh, to open our minds to our message today. We want to Dedicate Chris as he brings us your word. Give him inspiration from above that he might teach us your word this morning. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> it's time for our offering today. And... Uh, our bulletin says it's for Voice of Prophecy. Over the years, Voice of Prophecy has done so many good things in terms of ministry, uh, leading uh, a lot of radio ministry and in-person ministries. Uh, so our loose offerings for that, uh, obviously we can still do our church uh, budget and our tithes in a mark envelope. We also... Uh, have An empty jar. yes 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 anyway let's pray our heavenly father uh, we're so grateful that you're giving us financial means uh, to each one of us and these families represented in this church and we want to bring back what's yours and we want to also uh, share with the rest of the world some of these offerings that it might do your work we pray in jesus name Amen.
we're going to be playing the wonder of it all. There's the wonder at sunset at evening, the wonder at sunrise I see, but the wonder and wonders that thrills my soul is the wonder that God loves me. Do you have, yep, there I am. I'm ready to go. Good morning, church. We might be a little sparse this morning, but uh, I'm really glad to be here and thank God that we're all here this morning, this Sabbath morning. Boy, I sound kind of mellowy, don't I? Okay. Um, yeah, thank God that I'm here. Let's, uh, let me start with prayer. And then we'll get into the lesson this morning. Our Heavenly Father, I just, we all thank you so much for your word, Lord. Thank you that an almighty God who made the entire universe and made each one of us is able to give us a perfect and inerrant written word. And not only that, but the Holy Spirit illuminates it and brings it to our hearts i pray lord that your word would go forth today and and that we would draw near to jesus and near to our heavenly father lord in jesus name we pray amen well i've been uh oh you've already got me up i've been praying uh for some time actually most of this year i guess i started praying this year that the Lord would teach me to worship, you know, worship in a, in a personal way. I felt like I didn't have the language, I didn't have the experience, I, I just didn't know how to worship the Lord. Because worship is a, seems to me to be a, a very important part of returning the love to Him that, that He's shown me. And the Lord reminded me, um, recently, I guess the last month or so, 
reminded me how I was shown how to pray his word back to him. So he, he's taught me how to pray using scripture. Taught me that um, to pray his word back to him because scripture, let's face it, scripture from cover to cover is, uh, am I still good? Still coming through? Scripture from cover to cover is promises and truth and uh, and we know that God cannot break his promises. So why not when we're praying, when we're asking the Lord for anything and, and, and talking to him to bring his promises back to him? Well, I said, hmm, you're reminding me of this. Maybe I should try to approach worship with your word also. And I happen to be uh, reading and working my way through Psalm 119. It's the big one. And I was struck with, uh, it's easy to be said, anybody that opens their Bible to Psalm 119 can see that it's about the Word, it's about the law. Uh, it exalts the Word and lifts up the law of God. It's a celebration of Scripture, of the Word of God. The um, SDA Bible commentary points out that every single verse in Psalm 119, except for one, and there's 176 verses in Psalm 119. It's the longest chapter of the Bible. Every single verse in Psalm 119 references the law. And, and it does it in using one of eight different Hebrew words. And that's what's on the screen up here. I won't try to read all the Hebrew words, but um, the translation... And uh, of these words comes across as either the law, the statutes, precepts, commands, and commandments. Uh, the law has actually got two words in Hebrew, mis mispa, mishpa, mishpa, and uh, Torah. I think we've heard Torah before, mishpa is other laws. Decrees and uh, promises, the word or promises. Um, It's, um, so, so the way that Psalm 119 works is that um, it's, it's what they call an acrostic, um, which means that it uses a letter of the alphabet for either, an acrostic can either do it in each verse or it can do it in each stanza, which is a little bit harder to do. So there's 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet, and there's 22 stanzas in Psalm 119, each one is eight verses long. That's where you get the 180, 176 verses. And so the first eight verses use the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. The second eight verses use the uh, second letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So uh, they use these eight terms uh, distributed out through, through each of the 22 stanzas. He actually uses all eight expressions of the word or the law in, in uh, six of the letters, which is quite a, a linguistic trick. That's, that's very, it's inspired. And uh, he does it in a different order in each stanza, so he mixes it up and keeps it in variety going. Anyway, the object and the subject of Psalm 119 is the law. Now there's a very popular saying in our church uh, that says that the law of God is actually a description of him. It portrays who he is. Right? Who, who can tell me how that expression goes? How that, who can quote that, that saying? Right. The, the law is a transcript or a transcription of his character. Where does that come from? Anybody know? Do you know where in, the, in her writing that is? I didn't put it in my notes here. but It's also actually right out of Scripture. Um, the next, yeah, the next table here is actually um, an illustration of how the Bible backs that uh, teaching up. That the God's law is a transcription of his character. So in this table here, and I think you guys have seen this before, right here actually. Uh, I, did you present this, Kathy? I think. I don't know. Anyway, um, 
I've seen it up on the screens here at church. Uh, on the left column is a characteristic or attribute of the law and of God. And then the middle column is a scriptural reference of how the law is good, how the law is holy, how the law is perfect. And then the last column is a, is a scriptural reference of how God is good. God is holy. God is perfect. God is pure. God is just. God is true. God is spiritual. God is righteous. God is faithful. God is love. God is unchangeable. And God alone is eternal. So, uh, this is a scriptural uh, reference. It's not exhaustive, but it's just one a scriptural example of how the law is each of these has each of these attributes, and how God has each of these attributes. So, in um, I also shared in, in a I guess it was a lesson a couple two two lessons ago when I was talking about Psalm 19. You remember I did a, a sermon on the heavens declare the glory of God. I pointed out that God's glory is revealed through His character. Amen. That the glory of God is not just revealed in the magnificence, the power, the, the awesomeness of creation, but it's also revealed in His character. And that actually, His character is a, is a, is a more meaningful, a, a, a greater revelation of His glory than His creation. I, you guys all know that I, I work for NASA, and it's one of the uh, primary pursuits of NASA is to measure the universe, to study the universe and figure out what makes it up. Matter of fact, one of the top three or four, one, I think they had four main goals for building and launching the Hubble telescope, and one of them was the simple task of measuring the heavens. How big is the universe? And therefore, how old is the universe? And um, they spent 20-something days early on in the mission of Hubble Telescope, and they've done it many times since also. They picked the darkest, clearest part of the sky that they could find. There weren't any stars. There was one or two stars in it, and that was it. Very dim stars, but it was a little dark spot of the sky about the size of your thumbprint or a dime. And they watched that part of the sky for 20-something days and just focused on that one dark spot of the sky to see what was there, to see if they could see to the edge of the universe. And what they got was a frame. <laughs> they got a picture that was full of galaxies. I shared that with you in that, in that sermon about Psalm 19. They didn't get to see the end of the universe. They haven't measured it. And I, you know, I, I tell my friends at, at NASA, we're never going to be able to measure the span of the universe because as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is the love of my God for me and for you. Amen. It's not measurable. God is love. God is not measurable. His love is not measurable. Anyway, so when I say that uh, his character is a greater revelation than his creation, that's pretty big. That's huge. His character is worthy of worship. So I'm starting to get to where I want to go, right? And I want to, how do I worship you, God? <laughs> well, um, oh, and, and the other thing is, is that when, when Moses asked God to show him his glory, in Exodus 34, verse 6, it says, the Lord passed before him. He, you know, he, remember, he said, uh, he said well, you, you can't see my glory and it's full because you won't survive it. But when I walk back past you, I'll cover you up. And then when I'm past you, you can see me leave. And so in, in Exodus 34, verse 6, it says, The Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, Yahweh, Yahweh Elohim, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abound, uh, abounding in goodness and truth. So God didn't give him some big vision of the universe or anything like that he proclaimed his character he said that's my glory that's my glory so in here in uh, psalm 119 
what I, what I was led to, to do is that when I see the word law or one of those Hebrew words that's translated promise or commands or decrees or whatever, I can substitute character, God's law, God's character, or maybe one of the attributes of his character without corrupting the praise and exaltation and worship that's in the psalm there, right? When I do that, and this is, what, this is what's exciting. I hope you guys can, can share this with me. When I do that, something wonderful, something beautiful really happens. And, I, and I'm discovering that my prayers that to learn how to worship God are, are starting to be answered. Because I'm taken from, well, I'm, I'm taken from tablets of stone, the law, right? I'm taken from tablets of stone to the heart of God himself when you substitute character and the attributes of God in these verses in scripture. It's like I'm being taken from a monument to a person that the monument represents. It's like, it's like standing in the Jefferson Memorial, which I don't know if you've ever been there, but it's a beautiful memorial. It's like standing there in, a, in the Jefferson Memorial and admiring some of the things that he said and then suddenly turning around and meeting Thomas Jefferson himself. So that's what I want to practice. This is what I want to do today. It's a short lesson, really, but the, uh, the scriptures go on for a little while. So I don't know, uh, are we able to share my notes here in the document? I, I, I gave them my Word document and just said, just page through the document with me so you can see what I've done. Um, it's not Chris's translation of the scriptures or paraphrase. I'm, I'm not changing scripture. I'm just trying to get closer to the heart of God and worship God. So I want to start off in the um, the first verse of um, Psalm 119. If you want to open your Bibles to Psalm 119, you can follow along with me. And if something occurs to you that can substitute better than what I've picked, you're welcome to do that too. Just blurt it out. We've never done this little technical thing before, so bear with us just a second. Let's see if we can get it um, single page. Yeah, there you go. Huh. He doesn't like that monitor. That works. Yeah, we'll just do that. That works. Okay. So starting in verse 1, Psalm 119. I actually cut my note off here. I'm going to read it from the screen. And I just, I strike through so you can see the, the words that I'm substituting here in order to, to worship God. So Aleph, you'll see these Hebrew uh, words. Those are the names of the Hebrew alphabet. And I'm not going to try to pronounce all of them because I'll probably f flub them up a little bit. But uh, I know Aleph is Aleph from a song that I learned. But um, Blessed are those whose ways are merciful, kind, and long-suffering. So you substitute these attributes of God's character to praise Him, not just the, His Word, who walk according to the character of the Lord. Blessed are they who ask to know Him and seek Him with all their heart. They do nothing wrong. They are like Him. You have shown us who you are and promised to change us as we behold you. Oh, that I could be like you. And then I would not be put to shame when I consider who you are. I will praise you with an upright heart as I learn of your character and I walk with you. Do not utterly forsake me. So do you see, understand what I'm doing here? It really 
it blessed me so much. It, one, it, you, you love to see an answer to your prayers, right? An explicit answer to your prayers to say, thank God, you know? But also, just because I felt like in my private time, I could really, really worship God using his own word. So let's go on a, uh, a lot further here. I, I, I really like doing this, and I hope you're enjoying it too. By living according to your character, I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your likeness. I have hidden you in my heart that I might not sin against you. Praise be to you, O Lord. Show me who you are. With my lips I recount all your attributes. I rejoice in knowing you as one rejoices in great riches. I meditate on your mercy, your kindness, your long-suffering, and consider your ways. I delight in you, and I will not neglect your love. Do good to your servant, and I will live. I will know you. You know, and a lot of these are are pretty bold statements, but it's the word of God, and I take them as a promise that this is something that God is going to bring me to by his spirit, by sharing his love with me. I'm not being boastful. You know, and that's something that I've run into when I read the Psalms and read David. I'm like, David, I can't say that, you know. But I can say it as an expression of my hope in the promises of God. Scripture is the promise to us. So uh, hear it with that, that instead of... Um, it's a, and again, the object is bringing glory to God, not, not me. Open my eyes that I may see wonderful things in you. I am a stranger on the earth. Do not hide from me. My soul is consumed with longing. For my soul is consumed with longing for you at all times. You rebuke the arrogant who are cursed and who stray from from you, those who stray from you. Really, it's not, it's not about us keeping the commandments. It's about us having Christ in our hearts. It's about having the Holy Spirit. It's about walking in the Spirit. That's how we keep the commands. Remove from me scorn and contempt, for I draw near to you. Though rulers sit and slander me, your servant will draw near to you. You are my counselor. And then verse 25, I am laid low in the dust. Preserve my life according to your love. I recounted my ways and you answered me. Show yourself to me. Let me know who you are. And then I will meditate on your wonders. My soul is weary with sorrow. Strengthen me according to your nature. Keep me from deceitful ways and be gracious to me through your mercy. I have chosen the way of truth. I have set my heart on your integrity. I hold fast, O Lord, in you. Do not let me be put to shame. <laughs> I run after you, for you have set my heart free. Teach me, O Lord, to love you wholly. Then I will keep them to the end. Give me understanding, and I will draw near to you with all my heart. Direct me in the path of your nature, in your ways, for there I find delight. Turn my head to you, and not towards selfish gain. Turn my eyes away from worthless things and preserve my life according to your love. Fulfill your promise to your servant so that you may be feared and take away the disgrace that I dread. For you are good. 
How I long for you. Preserve my life in your righteousness. Verse 41. May your unfailing love come to me, O Lord, your salvation according to your promise. Then I will answer the one who taunts me, for I trust in you. Do not snatch the word of truth from my mouth, for I put my hope in you, Lord. I will always seek after you, forever and ever. I will walk about in freedom, for I have sought out your nature. I will speak before kings, speak of you before kings, and will not be put to shame, for I delight in you because I love you. I lift up my hands to your commands. I lift my hands up to your character, which I love, and I meditate on your loving kindness. Verse 49, remember your servant, for you have given me hope. My comfort in my suffering is this, your promises preserve my life. It didn't have to change anything there. The arrogant mock me without restraint, but I do not turn from you. I remember your integrity, O Lord and I find comfort in you. Indignation grips me because of the wicked who have forsaken your faithful, long-suffering love. You, your nature is the theme of my song wherever I lodge. In the night, I remember your name, O Lord, and I will seek to know you. This has been my practice. I will obey you. You are my portion, O Lord. I have promised to pursue you. I have sought your face with all my heart. Be gracious to me according to your promise. I have considered my ways and turned my steps to be like you. And I will hasten and not dis delay to draw near to you. Though the wicked bind me with ropes, I will not forget your integrity. So, the other thing, you know, these are fearful days. Times are changing, and we can see the time of trouble coming. It's approaching, and it's getting closer and closer. It's a fearful thing. But when you consider the love of God, who God is, I'm filled with hope. I'm filled with the promises of God. And these statements are something to remember in that time of trouble, right? No, I made up my mind back there and I'm going to keep this. I'm going to, I've chosen to pursue God. I've chosen to seek out who He is and that's what I'm still going to do no matter the persecution, the ridicule, the, the uh, heckling or whatever we get as a... As a a person who has faith in and trusts the Word of God. Though the wicked bind me with ropes, I will not forget your integrity. At midnight I ra rise to give you thanks for your righteous nature. I am a friend to all who fear you, to all who follow you. The earth is filled with your love, O Lord. Teach me your love. Do good to your servant, verse 65, according to your promise, O Lord. Teach me knowledge and good judgment, for I believe in you. I trust in you. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I pursue you. You are good, and you do what is good. Teach me your ways. Though the arrogant have smeared me with lies, I keep with all my heart, I pursue you with all my heart. Their hearts are callous and unfeeling, but I delight in your love. It was good for me to be afflicted so that I might learn about you. 
Your righteousness is more precious to me than thousands of pieces of silver and gold. Verse 73. Your hands made me and formed me. Give me understanding also to know you. May those who fear you rejoice when they see me. For I have put my hope in your faithfulness. I know, O Lord, that you are righteous. And in faithfulness you have afflicted me. May your unfailing love be my comfort according to your promise to your servant. Let your compassion, let your compassion come to me that I may live for you are my delight. May, may the arrogant be put to shame for wronging me without cause, but I will meditate on your loving kindness. Those who fear you turn to me. Those who know your integrity and character. May my heart be always one toward you that I may not be put to shame. Verse 81. My soul faints with longing for your salvation, but I have put my hope in you. My eyes fail looking for your promise. I say, when you comfort me, when will you comfort me? Though I am like a wineskin in the smoke, I will not forget you. How long must your servant wait? When will you punish my persecutors and the arrogant dig pitfalls for me contrary to you and your nature? You are trustworthy. Help me, for men persecute me without cause. They almost wipe me from the earth, but I have not forsaken you. Preserve my life according to your love, and I will tell of your faithfulness. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm running out of time here, but I wanted to um, close with these thoughts. Uh, again, my, my last sermon was about f fear and love. That was the title. And I tried to show how the antidote for fear is love. Because love, and in particular, God's love, which is perfect, casts out fear. Right? That's our verse. Love is a relationship. And while a knowledge of God is the first half of that relationship and it comes first we love because God first loved us our response to that love is the other half how do we have a relationship with God how do I have a relationship with God by receiving his love Amen. it's shown us every day by receiving his love and returning his love so we can practice this love to God. We can practice this worship anytime that we have Scripture with us. Whether we're being persecuted, whether we're in the dungeons, you know, that's one of the reasons you want to hide the Word in your heart so that you always have the Scripture with us. We can practice this love anywhere that we have Scripture. So uh, thanks for letting me share and We'll uh, do our closing hymn now, and then I'll close with a prayer. Our closing hymn is hymn 86, How Great Thou Art.
Wonderful, beautiful, righteous, and holy thou art, Lord. How wonderful that you sent your Son, not sparing, Lord, to die, to give us life. Thank you for raising him from the dead, Lord. Thank you for giving us the promise of, of the resurrection. Thank you, Lord, for being God Almighty. For loving, for being so awesome, merciful, kind, and patient, for being Savior. We have a Savior, and He lives. Lord, show us Your glory and teach us to love, I pray. And we give You thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Be dismissed.